everyone, welcome back to Pediatric Therapy Essentials. My name is Dr. Heather Sossaman and I'm a pediatric physical therapist. In this week's episode, we're talking about physical therapy, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, it's October and that means it's National Physical Therapy Month. So to all my fellow PTs and PT assistants out there, happy PT month. Thank you so much for all of the hard work and dedication that you put into your jobs. I've been working in the field of physical therapy for quite a few years now. And though not every day is perfect, I really feel blessed to be part of this amazing group of men and women that spend each and every day doing their best to help other people. So in honor of Physical Therapy Month, I thought I'd spend today's episode telling you a little bit about what PTs do, what kind of specialized PTs there are out there, and if you're interested, how you can become a PT. So let's dive in. So what are physical therapists? Well, the best way to describe us is movement experts. We evaluate and analyze the way people move in order to make their lives better. And if you have a PT in your life, you know that evaluation and analyzing the way people move is just something we do without even thinking about it. When physical therapists analyze movement, they evaluate numerous body systems and types of movement to get a complete picture. Some of those areas might include range of motion. Each joint within the human body has a normal range of movement it's capable of creating. Joints that move too much or too little can cause our bodies to move in incorrect patterns and may cause pain. We may also look at your muscle strength. Are the muscles in your body generating enough force to move your body correctly? We look at alignment. Do the joints within the body line up the way they were intended to, both at rest and during movement? We may look at your neurologic system, and this area can vary greatly depending upon the age and diagnosis of the person involved. But some of the areas of the neurologic system we may look at are things like reflexes, sensation, and muscle tone. We also look at a person's balance and coordination. So are they safely able to perform complex tasks? Things like climbing the stairs, picking something up off the floor, or running and jumping. We also analyze a person's gait or how they walk. And there's a lot of things that we're looking for, but our essential goal is to make sure that the person is walking safely and without pain. In children, we look at things like gross motor skills, which are those big skills and big movements, things like walking, running, and jumping. And we wanna be sure that a child's able to perform the skills considered average for their age. Now there are lots of other categories that PTs look at, depending upon their specialty, but this is just kind of a broad overview of the things that we take into consideration. The reason we analyze and evaluate all of these categories is to determine the root of the problem that you came to see us for. So as physical therapists, we have lots of techniques in our toolbox that can help you feel better. Some of them you might be familiar with, things like stretching, strengthening, and even some modalities like electrical stimulation or ultrasound. But we also have some skills that people aren't always super familiar with, things like joint mobilization, myofascial release, gross motor skill facilitation, or gait training. But no matter what technique we use, ultimate goal is to help you feel or do something better. I think when most people think of physical therapists, they think of somebody rehabbing someone who tore their ACL or helping someone who had a total knee replacement. And before I became a PT, that's what I thought too. But there are so many areas of specialty within the scope of physical therapy. So I wanna take a few minutes to tell you about some of them that you might not know about. We of course have orthopedic PTs that specialize in treating pain and injuries to the musculoskeletal system, such as ACL tears, rotator cuff tears, knee pain, and low back pain. We have neurologic PTs who work with individuals that have experienced an injury or disease that affects their nervous system, such as traumatic brain injuries, strokes, or conditions such as multiple sclerosis. Geriatric PTs specialize in working with the elderly and the myriad of conditions they experience as they age, such as Parkinson's disease, dementia, and arthritis. Cardiac and pulmonary PTs work with individuals recovering from conditions such as heart attacks, heart surgery, and pulmonary disease. 
There are even oncology PTs who work with individuals experiencing cancer and the resulting conditions that occur during and following treatment. Pelvic health PTs work with both women and men on conditions such as incontinence, pelvic pain, and pre- and postpartum issues in women. And then there's my favorite, pediatric PTs. We work with children from birth, including the NICU, through 21 or 22 years of age, with a variety of conditions such as simple developmental delays and neurologic conditions like cerebral palsy and spina bifida, and genetic conditions such as Down syndrome. So, what does it take to become a PT? Well, it depends on when you graduated. I graduated from PT school in 1998, yikes, a long time ago. At the time, physical therapists had a master's degree, but now physical therapists are required to get a doctorate. And some of us with master's degrees, like myself, have chosen to go back and get their doctorate, but it's not required. Most physical therapy schools in the United States require applicants to have a bachelor's degree prior to entering the graduate program. The DPT program lasts approximately three years. During that time, students spend about 80% of their time in the classroom setting and 20% in the clinical setting. If you're interested in working in the field of physical therapy, but maybe not up for all that amount of schooling, you could consider becoming a physical therapy assistant. Physical therapist assistants graduate with an associate's degree and work under the direct supervision of the PT. Their job is to implement the treatment plan created by the supervising physical therapist. PTAs are an invaluable part of the PT profession. Without their help and support, PTs would not be able to do the work that we do. If you'd like more information about what it takes to become a physical therapist or more information about our field, please check out the American Physical Therapy Association. I will leave the link to their website in the description box below. And if you're really considering becoming a PT, I always encourage people to volunteer with a PT. There's nothing like actual experience in the field to see if it's something that you'll really enjoy. So thanks again to all the amazing PTs and PT assistants out there that make this profession what it is. Your hard work and dedication are noticed and appreciated. If you'd like more information on how to become a PT, the field of physical therapy, you can check out the blog post on my website, pediatrictherapyessentials.com, and the description box below where I'll have all the links to the websites I talked about today. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up and share it with someone else you think might enjoy it. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I hope you guys have a great week and a great PT month. I'll see you next Saturday.